freshwater jellyfish are unusual animals sometimes found swimming in our lakes and ponds. One species, Craspidacusta sourabii, is found in many parts of the United States and in other parts of the world. Scientific evidence now indicates that this jellyfish probably arose from marine ancestors in China and later spread to other parts of the world. This unusual jellyfish, Craspidacusta, has intrigued many fishermen, students, and scientists since its discovery in England a century ago. The adult form of this animal is a graceful medusa stage which swims through the water with pulsating movements. Sometimes the pulsations stop and the medusae drift slowly down through the water. Although freshwater jellyfish occur in many lakes and ponds, they usually appear only during the summer and early fall months. In the ocean, however, jellyfish are common and widespread. Most jellyfish and other members of the phylum Cnidaria live in the sea which was their original home. Freshwater jellyfish, in contrast, are unusual. In the life cycle of the freshwater jellyfish, the most conspicuous stage is the jellyfish or medusa. Many tentacles are attached around the margin of the umbrella-shaped body of the medusa, and four long gonads hang from the lower side of the bell. The medusa has both long and short tentacles around the margin. The short tentacles are especially important in the capture of prey, while the long tentacles serve mainly for support and stability in swimming and do not function actively in feeding. In this closer view, both the short and long tentacles are apparent. Also, the many statuses or balancing organs around the margin. Both the short and long tentacles bear nematocysts or stinging capsules. In a phase contrast microscope, we can see many ovoid nematocysts on the tentacles. With higher power, we can see the coiled filament within the nematocysts. Also, we can sometimes see nematocysts with a released filament and a spiny base outside the capsule after discharge. Freshwater jellyfish feed on small animals or zooplankton in the water. Feeding them in the laboratory with brine shrimp larvae allows us to observe their feeding behavior. Brine shrimp, which contact the short tentacles, are quickly immobilized by the nematocysts. After contact with the brine shrimp, the medusa stops its pulsations and draws a portion of the bell toward the manubrium. This action brings the captured food organisms to the mouth located at the end of the manubrium. Several minutes after feeding, food is drawn through the mouth into the manubrium and the digestive cavity of the medusa becomes filled with partly digested brine shrimp. Later, the digested materials are engulfed by digestive cells lining the gastrovascular cavity and undigested materials are eliminated back through the mouth. This abandoned limestone quarry has had a population of freshwater jellyfish for many years. During the summer and early fall months, many medusae swim near the surface and can be collected with a dip net. The medusa is the largest and most conspicuous stage in the life cycle. Most of the year, however, this animal lives in the microscopic polyp stage. The polyp stage is very small and grows attached to sticks, stones, and other submerged objects. To learn more about the polyp and other microscopic stages of the jellyfish life cycle, scientists submerge microscope slides held in a rack. These slides provide a substrate to collect these small animals and their associates. After several weeks under the water, the rack containing the slides is recovered 
and placed in a glass jar containing fresh pond water. Back in the laboratory, the slides are examined under a microscope to locate the tiny animals which have attached to the surface of the slides. Among the common animals are bryozoans with their characteristic ring of feeding tentacles and creeping gastrotrichs which glide along the surface of the microscope slide. Associated with these tiny animals, we also find the polyp stage of the jellyfish, the main object of our search. The jellyfish polyps are nearly transparent and have many nematocysts located around the mouth. These nematocysts serve to immobilize any animal that comes in contact with the polyp. After a polyp immobilizes an animal, the prey is taken into the mouth and enters the digestive cavity as seen in time-lapse photography. In the gastrovascular cavity, Digestion reduces the prey to small fragments, which then can be ingested by the digestive cells lining the cavity. Thus, the digestion is both intercellular in the cavity and intracellular within the digestive cells. Movements of the food materials are caused by the action of flagella on the surface of the digestive cells lining the cavity. Later, the undigested materials are expelled from the mouth. The polyp stage is an important part of the life cycle of the jellyfish. This stage exhibits three kinds of asexual reproduction. One type of reproduction results in the formation of an elongate asexual larva called a frustule. The frustule starts as a small mass of thickened tissue on the side of a polyp. This tissue mass elongates and is slowly molded into a frustule. Later, this larva breaks away from the polyp. As shown in time-lapse photography, the frustule creeps along the substrate in a characteristic worm-like fashion. Finally, the frustule settles down and transforms into a new polyp. A second kind of reproduction produces a bud on the side of the polyp. This type of bud remains attached and results in the formation of a colony with several polyps joined together at their bases. Detritus often collects around the polyp colony. A third type of reproduction occurs during certain times of the year and leads to the formation of buds which become medusae, the sexual, free-swimming stage of this species. Freshwater jellyfish are dioecious, that is, each individual is either male or female. The sexes are separate. Four large sac-like gonads are suspended from the four radial canals. The ovaries of female medusae have a granular appearance because of the many eggs born on their outer surfaces. Fertilization and cleavage of the eggs of the freshwater jellyfish have been observed in the laboratory by scientists only a few times. Sexual reproduction in natural environments seems to be rare because a pond or lake usually contains only one sex. Present-day jellyfish closely resemble their ancestors, which first appeared on Earth some 600 million years ago. Although the jellyfish have retained their main features throughout millions of years, they have nevertheless developed much diversity in behavior and form. This diversity of form is clearly illustrated in the complex life cycle of Crespidacusta. This life cycle includes both sexual and asexual reproduction, as well as the alternation of 
an attached polyp stage, and a free-swimming medusa stage. Eggs produced by a female medusa may be fertilized by sperm from a male medusa. The fertilized egg develops into a ciliated planula larva. The planula loses its cilia, settles to the substrate, and grows into a new polyp. The new polyp grows and, under appropriate conditions, can form more polyp buds to become a colony. Or it can form frustules, the asexual buds which detach and develop into new polyps. Or it can form medusa buds which develop into free-swimming medusae. Thus, the life cycle of the freshwater jellyfish, Craspidacusta, includes both an asexual cycle in which frustules are formed and released to produce new polyps, and a sexual cycle in which medusa buds are formed, released as free-swimming medusae, and mature to produce eggs and sperm for sexual reproduction. Although jellyfish are often considered to be primitive animals, their great adaptability has enabled them to survive for millions of years and to persist under many different environmental conditions. <laughs>